Page 44, Hawaiian Love Song. It's the last piece in the book. Congratulations if you've made it all through here and you're playing them okay. If you've been struggling and it's really not happening for you and you're just not getting it, please go back through the book again because it will help. It really will. Don't be in a hurry to hurry up and get through this thinking you're going to learn quicker because you won't. Take your time. So, I have a few things I want to talk about here. At the top of the page 44, they're talking about broken chords. Well, we already know what a broken chord is. This is really a rolled chord. A rolled chord is a type of broken chord. It's just very quickly. See, otherwise, we might play these notes as half or eighth notes. Right? Look, look at the second line here on page 44 in the right hand. You have this. Here you go. That's broken chords. But what we want to do is we want to roll it just boom, boom, boom. It's just a real quick shift the weight from one, it's just rolling it. Hold them both down. And the fun here is through a lot of these, at least with these thirds, that's an interval of a third. You're using two four for all of them, so your hand's moving all over the place. The way I do it, I put my hand in that position, I leave it in that position, and then I just aim the index finger. I mean, you could you could aim the aim the ring finger instead if you want to. Doesn't matter. The idea is as long as your hand is in this position, the other finger, whichever one, will do what it needs to do. You're going to have to look down at the keyboard quite a bit here on these jumps. But when you're just moving one key at a time, hopefully you can get to where you don't have to look at the keyboard for that. Very soft on the echo. And it's 4-2 through all of this. It's part of the fun of the piece. I mean, yeah, we could use other fingering, but this is... It's one of the reasons for doing the piece is to use this fingering, so we'll use it. And that's pretty much it for the right hand till you get to the top of page 45. Now at the top of page 45 you have the same thing, except they're not rolled chords. Now it's a, a more of a broken chord, it's a triplet, with a rest on the first part of the triplet. Well, the, the left hand's playing there, so you can one and a two and a. One and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three. Still two four one. So the left hand, but they're even. They're not rolled. No, even. One and a two and a. With the right hand. I know I'm not playing all the notes in the left hand. It's not what I'm after. I'm after the right hand. This, that, that. Uh, even triplets. Till you get to the second line, then you're back to your rolled chords. Last measure of the second line on page 45. Rolled chords again, but now it's 1 5. Same thing. It's a real quick. And then back to 2 4. Till you get down to the bottom. Last few measures there. Let's take the third measure over. Start there on the last line. And then it's 1-5. And that's tied over. So you're going to hold it out for six counts. Now that first line on page 44, I skipped that. But again, they're just triplets. And it's telling you at the first measure, the left hand's going to do the first triplet. Right hand's going to do the next one. They're telling you left hand does the next one, right hand, and then the left hand does the high C. It's an A B A. It's up here. The idea is keep them smooth. One and a two. Back to the triplets. One and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one, two, three. Watch the fingering. The fingering is fine. I can offer other fingering. I'm too lazy. Use their fingering. It's good. That's the introduction. For the left hand, you just got these broken chords. You 
you can do that okay until you get it to the top of page 45. The left hand is now going to use 2 and 4, or 4 and 2, I should say, here. And you. It works the same as the right hand, and I just aim one finger and leave my hand in that position. I can go on down. And these are more or less legato. You can't really connect them with the hands because of the fingering. Until you get all the way down to there. And then you're in position for the next line. And that's good until you get to the bottom. The last couple of measures here. This is the chord. Those last four notes in the left hand. And I would use the fourth finger on the E. That's the fingering for the chord. Pedal wise, we got pedaling all over the place here. It's just going to. All right, I ain't getting into it. We'll just pedal it the way they're showing you, with one exception. And that is over on page 45, third line down, the first two measures. I would not pedal those two measures. These. We don't want to smear the left hand, just so don't pedal those two measures. Otherwise, it's legato pedaling throughout. Again, I like to hear a break in the phrasing. It's up to you. When we do the play with me, I will pedal it that way. But again, you decide. Now, the first line on page 44 is marked on Dante, which is kind of a nice leisurely pace. I don't know how fast that is. You'll have to decide. It's slower than a moderato. It's faster than a slow. About one, two, one. And there's a crescendo up to the top where you're going from a medium soft to a medium loud. There's not much difference. You can actually start softer than a medium soft. You could give you more room to get louder. So you have to plan each one. So I have to make each triplet just a little bit louder. Save most of your crescendo to the end of it. And then you're here. And then, they, and starting with the second line, they say tempo de waltz. We've had this before. It's a waltz tempo, whatever that is. Uh, there's different speeds for waltzes, so how fast do you think it should go? Any faster than what you can play accurately, so uh, your waltz tempo may be pretty slow. It's up to you. Now, on these rolled chords, I shouldn't mention because I play these maybe differently than a lot of people think they should be played. I play the first note on the beat with the left hand. A lot of people will play the top note on the beat, so it's here. So when we play these, I'm going to play these notes together. But if you want to play the top note on the beat, I guess it's up to you. I don't recommend it, but you can. But I'd still recommend the bottom note on the beat, and that's how I'm going to do it. Now, let's just cover all these symbols, because they're all important. So at the beginning, 4-4 four, four time, we're in the key of C major, no sharps or flats, do, go do the C major scale. You have Andante, and you have the dynamics, and you have the slurs, and you have the crescendo, you have the AVA, you know what all that is, I hope. If you don't, please go back through the last couple books again. Then, on the second line, it's MF, medium loud, that's the melody. So the left hand has to stay soft throughout this. Just keep the left hand soft until you get to the top of page 45 and then really it's that line, the first line, both hands are melody pretty much so you can bring both hands out. And then in the starting in the second line again left hand has got to be soft again. Grazioso is gracefully, isn't that nice, whatever that is, don't forget the echo in the right hand when it comes up here. Very soft on it. It's got to be an echo. So the left hand should be so soft you can hardly hear it on those. And you have a few of those throughout. So you'll see the dynamic changes in there and you can do those. 
Over on page 45, on the third line down, you have a retardando, means get a little slower, so when you play it, you just slow down, and then in the next measure, it's an off tempo. That means go back to your regular tempo you were doing before the retard, and go again, and, all of, and it's all of a sudden. So it's the third line. Then you get down to the bottom. Now you're finally getting loud. The last few measures. They're ending it with a loudness. Don't know why, but that's what they're doing. Okay. So and that's that. Now you're starting out in 4-4 four, four time. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 1, 2, 3, 4. Until you get to the end of the first line. You see the 3-4? Now the time signature is changed to 3-4. The beat stays the same. The four, the quarter note is the same speed. Well, they're saying it's a tempo to waltz, so you'd actually speed it up a little bit. So for the last couple measures of the first line going into the second, it's here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. So all of a sudden, I just changed speeds. And, and, and yeah, it works that way. And then you keep that pretty much throughout the rest of the piece. So, at the beginning, let's try this out. I give us four counts. So the left hand starts it on the right hand, and you're going to move all over, and the foot's on the pedal. Here we go. One, two, three, and a go, and a. This is a piece you have to practice for a while to really get good, but it's a great piece to play for people. You know, it's wonderful to listen to, and it's a lot of fun, and it's a lot of fun to watch your hands move all over everywhere, you know, while that goes. I'd play it something like this, I think.
page 46 they have a quiz quiz number two I'm going to go over that briefly with you because it's important you understand most of this stuff some of these questions I don't agree with but that's not important they're here we're going to talk about them they're all true false so we'll just do this quickly because there's 20 of these puppies Ugh. number one the key of A flat has four flats the answer to that is true yes the key of A flat has four flats if you knew how to do the A flat major scale, you could figure it out mentally real quick by just doing the scale in your head. And okay, yeah, it's got four flats. Number two, the flats in the key of A flat are B A D. Well, we just said it had four flats. So you know right there it's wrong because you didn't include all four flats. Now, of the flats, B A D, those are included in it, but it's also got an E flat in there. And that's not the order they're in. So it's not listing them in order. But it didn't say the order of the flats. It just said the flats. However, it's sort of true but not true. I mean, those flats are included in the key. But they also need the E flat. That's got to be there too. Number three. The word encore means folk tune. No, it doesn't mean folk tune. Go look it up. It's in the book. Encore means something. Number four, Estrellita means little star, and yes, that's true, and frankly, I don't know why it's here. It's not that, it's not something you got to remember in music. Right? It's just something that's in the book. Number five, in the piece, Shadows of the Moon, the right hand has the melody, and that's false. The left hand has the melody. You have to go find Shadows of the Moon to see what it is, but if you, if you look it up, you'll see that the left hand has it. Number six, reviewing old pieces daily is a good habit. Yes and no. Uh, reviewing old pieces is a good habit. You don't have to do it every day. I kind of, all, I, I space mine out. Where I will review two or three pieces on one day, and then other pieces on another, and other pieces. And eventually, usually within a week or so, I'll get back to them. But yeah, it depends on how many old pieces you have to review. Mm -hmm. And I only review the ones I really like. I don't review the others. Well, number seven, the abbreviation OP period in music stands for optic. Wrong, false, no. It stands for opus. Go look it up. It's in the book. Opus. Number eight, Gertrude and Elizabeth were two of Beethoven's pupils. Well, according to the book, they were. I don't know if they were or not, but according to the book, they were so okay it's fine with me it must be true hmm. number 10 the symbol and they show a C with a slice through it means 4-4 four, four time and that is false a C a common time is 4-4 four, four time when you put the slice through it that means cut time and that's 2-2 two, two time number 11 most of your practice should be at a slow tempo and that is true you definitely slow not all of it, but most of it should be slow. Number 12. This symbol is called a trill, and they give that little squeakly thing, a sideways squeakly thing. It's kind of like an, a capital S on its side. But it's not a trill, that's a turn. Trills is a different symbol. Number 13. This symbol, and it's a TR with a squiggly line behind it, is called a turn. And no, that's false. It's, it's a trill. So they've turned the symbols in number 12 and 13 around. And the turn, say, the turn, the TR with that, that's a trill. And then the sideways S thing, that's a turn. 14. A tempo means to choose your own tempo. No. I don't know that there's a Anything in music that tells you to choose your own tempo, unless they just don't give you a tempo, in which case you choose your own. All tempo means to resume the tempo you were doing before you change tempos. Well, whatever it is. Fifteen. Lilac Time Serenade is by Schumann. That's false. It's by Schubert. Similar, but different. They were contemporaries, but still different. 16. Tchaikovsky supported himself by his compositions. I don't know if that's true or false. It's sort of true, but it's only true because he had a female admirer, a very wealthy female admirer, who simply supported him and paid him because she loved his music. They didn't know each other. Uh, 
they never actually met, but she loved his music so much she supported him. Up until toward the end when she ran out of money and then she couldn't do it anymore. Number 17, The Wishing Well is by Mozart, and that is true, it's not called a wishing well, but in this book it is, so yes, it is by Mozart. Number 18, this is a broken chord, and they show a C and an E here with a squiggly line through the, arp the arpeggiated line, and we just had it on this, this piece. It's a, it's a, can be called a broken chord, but it's more accurately called a rolled chord. But a rolled chord is a broken chord, so I guess technically it's true, but I don't think of a, a rolled chord as a broken chord necessarily. To me, a broken chord is more rhythmically broken, and a rolled chord is just a very quick bloop type thing. There's no boop in a broken chord, usually. Number 19, in Just a Song at Twilight, the melody is in the treble clef, and that's false. If you go look it up in the book, the melody is in bass clef. I don't know why that's here, but I guess they want you to go look it up and see which clef the melody is in. Because the melody isn't always in the treble clef, or it isn't always in the right hand, it isn't always in the top staff, it's wherever. Number 20, last one, cantabile means playful. No, cantabile means singing style type. Playful would be more like jocoso or allegretto for speed, I consider it that type of thing. And that's the quiz, so congratulations if you've made it through this book. As I said before, if you are struggling with the pieces to get them, then please don't consider yourself through with the book yet. Go back through it again because you'll pick up stuff and remember stuff and you'll get the pieces better. You'll be so much better before going to the next book because the music's just going to get harder. and You'll just get more lost than you are. So take your time.